Have you ever thought about what happens to the waste when you desalinate seawater? Let's say you start with a bucket of seawater and extract half the bucket of fresh water. That means that you now have half a bucket left of doubly saltier water. And the more fresh water you extract, the more salty water you make and the saltier that water is. And now the question is, what to do with this super salty water or brine? And that's where we fit in. What if you could take that brine and deconstruct it into salt, as salt crystals, and fresh water with no waste? We're going to be talking about eutectic freeze crystallization, or EFC, which is a novel treatment process for brines, which involves cooling them down to the freezing point, at which point the water crystallizes out as ice and the dissolved salts crystallize out as pure, usable salts. Because the ice is less dense than water, it floats, and the salt, being more dense, sinks. Thus, EFC is a simultaneous purification and separation process. We will be sharing the story of our journey, the disasters and successes along the way, as well as our key insights about eutectic freeze crystallization. A little while ago, nobody was talking about brines. In 2011, the front cover of National Geographic proclaimed desalination as the cue for all our water woos. The question was, could seawater really solve freshwater crisis? Then, in 2019, the same magazine announced Desalination plant produced more waste brine than thought. We're actually getting close to peak salt, which is the excessive saltiness of the sea due to all the desalination. Inland, hypersaline brines are currently disposed of in waste ponds, which are both very expensive to build and unsustainable in long term. This is because new ponds must be built once the existing ones are filled. These ponds require a very large set of land set aside and they risk contaminating groundwater if their lining integrity is compromised. Alternatively, brines can be treated using evaporative crystallization, which uses heat to transform these brines into a purified distillate and a mixed salt waste. The disadvantages of these methods are, however, the high energy cost for heating. Additionally, the mixed composition of the salt waste is produced, which usually necessitates further treatment or disposal in landfills. The beauty of EFC is that the energy required to separate the water as ice, involving a phase change from liquid to solid, is one-sixth of that required to separate it by evaporation, liquid to gas. What's more, pure salts can be recovered because each has its own unique temperature at which it will crystallize out in that particular mixture. We started this research in our labs in 2007 when the only other significant work that had been done on the EFC process had been carried out in the Netherlands at the Technical University of Delft. They had progressed very far, but their equipment was too complicated to be attractive for local mining applications. We started off by borrowing an ice making machine from Palm Refrigeration, a company that manufactures machinery for freezing seawater on board fishing vessels. We broke it in the very first experiment that we tried on a brine in the lab. After that, we gradually developed and designed our own crystallizers and developed processes to conduct feasibility studies on different brines. We, that is crystallization and precipitation unit in the chemistry department, have shown that EFC is applicable in mining, fracking, textiles, power generation, and many other contexts. Our feasibility studies involve analyzing a sample of the waste, using thermodynamic modeling to predict temperatures at which the ice and each of the salts will crystallize out of the solution. And lastly, experimental testing in the labs. We can also identify each salt and whether or not it will be feasible to recover it. For example, we have shown that it is possible to recover both calcium sulfate and sodium sulfate from a coal mining brine. The calcium sulfate can be used to make ceiling boards, drywall, plaster, but it is also used as a fertilizer in agriculture and as a filler in dentistry and orthopedic surgery. Sodium sulfate is a key ingredient of soaps and detergents, but it is used in the production of paper, glass, textiles, and a variety of other materials too. 
Although EFC sounds like a very simple process, it is actually fairly complicated to design and operate effectively, since each of the elements has its own complexity. For example, the tendency of ice to form layers of ice scale on the sides of a crystallizer is a very real problem in implementing the technology. One of the major focus areas of our research has been into the causes and the mechanisms of ice scaling. We have investigated how the crystallizer hydrodynamics, crystallizer design, scraper speed, and stereo design affect ice scaling. We have also investigated ice scaling on a much more fundamental level and showed that different types of ice, for example, dendritic ice and layer ice have very different scaling tendencies. Another challenge for us has been moving from lab scale batch studies to industrial scale continuous processes. Through this progression, we quickly learned that scaling up the process comes with a myriad of complications. A continuous EFC process produces two solids simultaneously, ice and salt. However, the rate of ice production is 10 to 20 times more that of salt. This presents a challenge in the continuous design as the ice removal system must be able to remove ice from the top of the crystallizer at 10 to 20 times the rate that the salt removal system removes the salt at the bottom of the crystallizer. In addition, to effectively remove both ice and salt, the ice and the salt crystals need to be large enough to be mechanically separated. Small crystals will turn to slush and will entrain the mother liquor, leading to impure ice product. Small salt crystals will become caught up in the ice crystals due to the stirring motion and will not be able to sink to the bottom of the crystallizer. These and many other interesting questions have been investigated and solved in the development of this process. What is particularly exciting is that this technology has the potential to become standard in the mining industry. It will enable the mines and other industries to change the way they deal with wastewater. It also has the potential to change the way we view waste. Instead of considering it as a liability, it has the potential to be a resource. Thanks for watching.